This is like exercising yourself in the spirit. It is building you up. Preparing your heart to hear the word. And I'm going to speak in other tongues and then I'll interpret those tongues for you. The joy and the peace of the Lord be yours today. The joy and the peace of the Lord be yours today. The joy and the peace of the Lord be yours today. As it is with me, so it is with you. For you and I have become one, united together in our spirit. And my heart this day is full of joy and full of peace. Mm -hmm. And my joy and my peace are yours for the taking. Mm -hmm. Just shift over a little to the left, shift over a little to the right. Mm -hmm. And there I am. See me? I'm on the inside of you. I am here to promote the kingdom of God within. And as you yield to that, which I tell you is already within you, you will find joy rising up. And it is not a joy as you've known in the past. It's a joy, as my prophet Paul said, that is unspeakable. It's so full of glory. And so this day, not tomorrow, not next week, this day, I call on you to rejoice as I'm rejoicing this day in heaven. For you are my body created in my image and my likeness. And you reflect my glory. And my glory says this, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. <laughs> Let your forbearing spirit be known unto all men. Thank you. Lord. Forbearance, strength in the midst of difficulty. And my joy is your strength that Thank will bring it to pass, you. says your God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we Hallelujah. Worship you, Lord. We worship and praise you, you so and we much. thank you for thank your joy you. in our hearts. Thank and we yield you. to thank your joy you. that's within us. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And again, we are so blessed to be with you this morning. So why don't we just pray together and release our faith that our spirits are being fed and our faith is growing stronger. Father, yes. we thank you so much for choosing us, for loving us, and for making us a part of your family. We're asking you for fresh manna from heaven today to feed us, to help us, to give us answers and direction in our lives. And we purpose not to be hearers only, Lord, but to practice what we've heard from your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, this morning, guys, I'd like to take a few minutes and encourage you on what it means to be full of the Holy Spirit wisdom and faith so if you've got your bibles and maybe even a pen and a notebook because i'm gonna um share several scriptures and the way that i've learned what i've learned 
throughout the years of, of um, being a Christian is I would always take notes, I'd write scriptures down, and then I'd go over those scriptures later so that they became a revelation to me. It's not just something I was hearing from another preacher, but they would become real in my life. So if you have even a pen and a notebook, maybe you can just jot the scriptures down because I'll mention them briefly and so as not to take so much time, you can go back and look at them later. So let's look at Acts chapter six. I'd like to read verses one through four from the New Living Translation. And it says, but as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek speaking believers complained about the Hebrew speaking believers saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the 12 called a meeting of all the believers and they said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. And so brothers, select seven men who are well-respected and are full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. We'll give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can spend our time continually in prayer and to teaching or to the ministry of the word. So here we read about the number of the disciples that grew mightily and a situation arose where the 12 apostles had to make a definite decision not to continue serving tables, but to give themselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. We see that in verse four. And it is so important that all of God's ministers be continually in prayer and constantly feeding on the scriptures of truth. And you know what, guys? I believe this is Oh, this isn't only good advice for the fivefold ministry. This is great advice for the whole body of Christ. Did you guys know that in 2 Corinthians 5.18, the scripture says we are all ministers of reconciliation? Wow, that's a big word, Lisa. What does that mean? This means that we've all been given a task to do. And the message we are to bring to the world is to declare that people can have a restored relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Then in the same book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the scripture not only declares in verse 18 that we are ministers of reconciliation, but we are also ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. We represent the Lord Jesus Christ here on this earth. And you know what? we are to follow in his footsteps. Wow, that sounds like a tall order, mm -hmm. but guess what? We have been equipped by the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit with everything we need to do it. And you know, none of us, no matter who we are, can be strong in God unless we are diligently and constantly listening to what God has to say through his anointed word. We can't operate in his power and know his nature unless we study his, unless we study his word. And like I said before, what has helped me most in my life is listening to anointed word of faith teachers, people like Kenneth Copeland, Jerry Savelle, Jesse Duplantis, Keith Moore, people like that, and taking notes and then studying those notes until they become a part of me. I look up all the scriptures. I look them up in several different translations. Then you know what? The Lord leads me to other scriptures that the Lord shines a spotlight on. And I go, Ooh, I've never seen that before from that scripture. And I come away encouraged, strengthened and built up because that word of God has become a reality to me in my life. Look at 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15 says to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I encourage you, just like you were in school, 
to take the word of God, to read it, meditate on it, think about it, and then speak the word of God out of your mouth morning, noon, and night, and every opportunity you have in between. Why do we do this? Well, the psalmist David tells us in Psalm 119, verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So you'll find that the more of the word of God you hide in your heart, the more you'll live your life without sinning. Verse 50 of the same Psalm, yes, my love. Oh, excuse me, honey, that's Psalm 119, verse 11. I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And then in the same uh, Psalm 119, verse 50 says, your word has given me life. Notice it's his word that gives us life, not things, not vacations, not even a new house. Now there's nothing wrong with those things, but our life comes from him alone. As a matter of fact, we hear in Acts chapter 17, verse 28, that it's in him that we live and we move and we have our being. What do you mean, Lisa, in him? Well, in his word, living in the promises of God to us. See, guys, everything, everything that has been provided for us by grace has got to be received by faith. It's God's will that everybody be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But are there hundreds of thousands of people, even billions, that are not saved? Of course there are. Why? Because everything that's been provided by grace has got to be received by faith. This is how we got born again. And do you know things have not changed? When we got born again, we receive the word of God into our hearts, and then we declare it out of our mouths, Jesus is Lord. And that's exactly what we're to do throughout our whole Christian life. We're actually exhorted in the book of Ephesians, chapter five, verse one, to be imitators of God as dear children. Well, that says to me, we have to know what God is like. We have to know how he acts, how he talks, how he loves and forgives in order for us to imitate him, right? How can we imitate somebody that we don't know how, what they're like? And again, we learn about the nature of God through his word and also through the kind things that he does for us in our lives every single day. God also tells us a powerful thing from 1 Peter 1.16. It says, for the scriptures say, you must be holy for I am holy. Well, what does that mean? Like you mean become a priest or a nun? No, developing holiness begins with the fear of the Lord. And you know what the fear of the Lord is? It means you don't want anything that you do or say to displease him in your actions, in your words toward other people. It means that we care more about how God feels and what he tells us to obey from his word than how people feel. Mm -hmm. Even if the whole world is believing one thing, we believe the report of the Lord. Peter actually said in Acts 5.29, it's better that we please God rather than human beings. That's from the New International Version. So as you receive God's word into your heart this morning, and as you're listening to spirit-filled, anointed word of faith teachers, your whole body will be so full of life that you'll be made whole and strong. Do you know that Proverbs 4.22 tells us that God's words are life to us and health or medicine to all of our flesh, mm. not other things. His word is life to us and it is medicine to all of our flesh. That's why James 1.21 tells us to receive the implanted word with meekness, which is able to save our souls. And do you know, Rand, I looked up that word souls. Do you know it is translated 58 times as the word souls, 40 times as life, 
three times is mind and one time is heart. So we can say this scripture like this, receive the implanted word, which is able to save your soul, which is able to save your life, which is able to save your mind, which is able to save your heart. We praise God for so great of salvation. And remember guys, the word salvation in the Bible does not mean just going to heaven. What does salvation mean? I'll tell you. It means we are saved. We are healed. We are delivered. We're preserved. We are made whole and we are kept safe and sound. So anytime you see the word sozo in the Bible, like the woman with the issue of blood was made whole, that is the word sozo, which mm. means she was saved. She was saved from her sickness. Do you see yes. how the word is the same word? I want to encourage you guys this morning. It doesn't take 16 degrees and a perfect pedigree to fill a position in God's church. All God is looking for is a yielded, consecrated, holy life that he can turn into flames of fire. We're told in Matthew 3, 7, what? We will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. I love the prophet Jeremiah. He says in Jeremiah 20, verse 9, your word burns in my heart like a fire. It's like fire in my bones. I'm worn out trying to hold it in. I can't do it. So family, as you are faithful in doing the littlest things for God, he will fill you to the full with his Holy Spirit. He will make you a chosen vessel for himself and he will promote you to a mighty ministry in the salvation of many people and in healing the sick. There is nothing impossible to a man who is full of faith, full of wisdom and full of the Holy Spirit. It is beyond all human comprehension. And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, God will work wonderfully everywhere you go. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's good, Lise. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Yeah. You know, Lisa and I have talked about this this week, the background that God has brought us up in called the word of faith has been the thing that has set us apart in our life for the work of ministry and for just the day-to-day -day routine of living. Yes. It's interesting because somebody would say, I don't understand. You know, you emphasize understanding or knowing the word of God. Doesn't every church do that? Well, I, I've noticed that the churches that I've attended, and I've attended a lot of churches, they will teach from the Bible, and the pastor will refer to things in the Bible. But what we're talking about is taking that to the next step. You're not just learning the Bible, you're living from the Bible. Yes, amen. You know, the Bible becomes your environment, ideally. Yes. And that takes a while. In other words, for us to be immersed into the scripture, we have to place ourselves in that position to be immersed into the scripture. Yes. And so that takes a while. And God understands that that will take a while. But that's the purpose for meetings like this. You'll hear a lot, a density of the word of God being spoken. Amen. And you're not going to hear a lot of you know, stories about this and that going on. I mean, I could talk to you all day long about politics or, you know, what's happening in Florida and the sunshine is outside right now. It's a beautiful day. It's going to be what, like 74 degrees 77. or something? 77 degrees. Yeah, it's, we've been swimming and down at the jacuzzi and we could just make you real jealous. But the point is, is <laughs> that that's, see us. I, I'll tell you, doing that is very nice. It's very nice to be out during the winter time in the warm weather, et cetera. But it's not the life. The that's life right. yes. we have found is that in the midst of that, that's very nice. That's, that's a nice environment nice. to yeah. be in, right? Yeah. It is a nice environment. We've enjoyed 
that it is fun, that it's winter time, and that rather than it being 12 degrees, like in Connecticut, sorry guys, sorry. it's 70 something degrees here. That's a lot better. <laughs> it really is. It's a lot nicer weather, but that's all it is. It's just that's nicer all, weather. That's all it is, yeah. Because you could be just as depressed here as you would be in 12 degree weather. You could be just as sad here as you would be in the environment that you're living in today, whatever that environment is. So the point is, is that life is found in something other than the external. Amen. And that's kind of a hint to us today. And I'll, I'll get to the message here in just a moment. Oh, but the, Lord, the awesome. idea is that Jesus said that the kingdom of God is where? Within you. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yes. The kingdom of God's within us. Oh, that's right. Really? Do you know the, when we're praying, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth? Yes. If you add those two ideas together, we're praying that God's kingdom would come into the person. Yes. You know, inside of us. And boy, once we start having the kingdom of God move to the inside. Oh, boy. And controlling us from the inside. Yes. That's when things become sweet. You can be going through difficult circumstances mm. and look around you with a smile on your face legitimately. Amen. Not as some sort of a <laughs> mind numb robot. No. You know, that's not what a Christian is. No. So the point is, is that there is great truth to the kingdom living inside of us in a certain way. And that is through the scripture. Amen. Amen. How else do you do it? That's do you know true. that Smith Wigglesworth used to walk around with a little, little Bible in his pocket everywhere? Yes. I just, um, I pulled out of my closet this week, a little Bible that my grandparents had given to me. Yes. And I opened it up to the front and I saw that it said, you know, to Randy, let these words forever be important and significant in your life and you'll find success in everything that you do Amen. love mama and boppy oh. and then mama signed her name on the top and boppy signed his name below that and they put the date on it praise god and it's just a little you know bible about that big yeah. it's a little new testament but the point is is that smith wigglesworth <laughs> used to walk around with a new testament like that in his pocket all the time and they'd always see him what what are you laughing about randy and i always joke about the fact that i'll give you a thousand dollars if you ever catch me without my bible that's right <laughs> yeah occasionally i say can i transfer the thousand over today lise because every once in a while i find her without her bible well about, but pretty now, much I've, not i've got it on yeah. here now so yeah so she's, she's pretty well covered because she's never without her cell phone no but that's that's a good point honey. <laughs> but smith willsworth i just mentioned him as someone who was um you know very powerful in the kingdom of god amen and had uh, just an amazing ministry yes he did uh, of signs and wonders and miracles and yes the life of God coming through him. Yes. But, you know, he wasn't just that way because he he prayed every day. No. He did pray every day. Yeah. He prayed all the time. But he would tell you, that's not why I was strong in the Lord. He said, the reason I was strong in the Lord is because I would put his word into my heart. That's I hid right. his word in my heart. That's right. Constantly. Constantly. And the idea behind that is that you put it in your heart and then it kind of, you know, flows out of you again. Yes. And sort of dissipates yeah yeah well, what's that all about just distraction of this world yeah yeah it takes yeah, it out of us yeah. it shoots it out of us the scripture know? actually says hon and i can interrupt for a second yeah. hebrews 4 12 that the word of god is quick and powerful it is sharper than any two-edged sword and it divides asunder between soul and spirit and between joint and marrow is it and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart so the word of God goes in and it separates the stuff off. Like when you boil gold and all the impurities come up to the top and then you just skim them off and throw them in the trash. Hmm. Now, when you look in the word of God, which is a mirror, you actually see the reflection of yourself in that word. Yeah, you become transformed to what the word says were to be and look like. Yeah, yeah. That, that's great. That's a great illustration. And you know, as sincere believers, like all of us would be sincere believers wanting to know the Lord and wanting to walk with him. Yes. How do you do that? Should I just pray all day long? Absolutely, you should pray throughout the day. And I'd pray a lot in the spirit, in yes. other tongues. 
That's, that's one thing you can do, of course. Yes. But really, the way you know the Lord is through his word. Yes. Jesus said that my words, the words I'm speaking to you, the words I'm speaking yes. are spirit. Yep. My words are life and they are truth. Yes. And so you want that truth and that life on the inside of you. How do you do it? I mean, where do you grab it from? You get the word of God and you start reading it and quoting it to yourself and thinking about it. Yes writing it down, talking to somebody else or other people about it. Yes. And that that's called a meditation, uh, meditating, Amen. even though that word's been ripped off yes. by mm -hmm. false religion. Mm -hmm. The word meditate is a scriptural term. It means to mutter to yourself. It's like a cow chewing its cud. It's yes. a repeating thing yes. again yes. and again and again, because it takes something to get that word down inside of your heart. That's right. That's why Joshua 1, 8 tells us to meditate on the word night and day. Yes. So that we can observe everything he tells us to do and be successful in everything we set our hands to. Yes. So that's a lot of words to say this. How do I know the Lord more? By the word. Amen. That's a good hint, isn't it? Yes. Because where can you find him? He's invisible. Yeah. He doesn't even talk no. to our ears. No. No. occasionally mm -hmm. that happens mm -hmm. with people but that's not the way that the lord typically speaks he no. speaks in our heart that's he's right. within us yes the kingdom of god is inside of us yes so how do you get more of them i want more of the lord i want mm -hmm. more of the lord i want yeah. more of the lord so i'm just going to worship him for five hours today hey seriously awesome yeah but i'm saying is that the way the lord prescribed us to know him more i mean do we do we read the document you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and see indications that Jesus was leading the people on the mountainside to dancing and worshiping before the Lord, singing, praising his name for hours on end, on end, on end, on end? Or do we see him teaching the people? Right. He taught them the right. word. Yes. That's how he put God into the people yes. is through the words that he spoke to them yeah and you know ran especially today there are so many voices out there uh -huh. that will be speaking to you constantly that unless we know the truth of the word of god we won't be able to distinguish the truth from the lie that's why it's so important to know what the word of god has to say that's right yeah praise the lord okay well that's a good segue into what we're going to talk about for a few minutes this morning that's awesome if you want to open up to the scripture, it's going to be very familiar to all of us. Uh, but I'm only taking the traditional half of the scripture that we normally would quote. But this is Romans chapter 10. <laughs> Romans chapter 10. Here we go. Starting with verse 9. And today, ending with verse 9. Normally, we would do Romans 9 and 10. This is the scripture. As we read it, you'll recognize it that most of us have used in order to receive Jesus as Lord. A minister would typically open to Romans 10 and start quoting verse 9 and 10 to us in order to officially become a born-again believer. Let me read this to you from the New King James Version. It says this, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to read that one more time to you. And then we're going to talk about certain components of this sentence, essentially, that are so powerful. Yes. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, hmm. the Lord Jesus. See that idea? Yes. If you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. So I want to look at a few of the words that are in the sentence, and, and that will kind of take us into the thought process here. That's awesome. Starting with this word confess. Yes. Because the whole sentence we're looking at kind of rotates around that word confess. Yes. What do we mean by confess? A lot of times when we're thinking of confess, we're thinking about the concept of confessing our sin, like in 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins 
and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Yes. You know, if you confess, you speak out, you say your sins unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's wonderful. Because we're forgiven of our sins and cleansed from them. Yes. By confessing our sins. Right. In this case, though, mm -hmm. that would be really, in regards to our sin, a, a negative confession, something that's kind of negative, that we're getting rid of something. Mm -hmm. This is confessing something to bring something close to us. Yes. To bring it upon us. We could read more of Romans 10 to get the context, but today we won't do that. Just suffice to say, the idea is, is that the word of God is close to us at all times. And yes. simply by confessing yeah. what God has said, and we'll see what confess means in a moment, it brings that close to us yes. and it makes it a reality to us. Lisa said earlier that grace has made all things available to the body of Christ and the world around us. And yet, even though it's available to all of us, we don't get it until we appropriate it or yes. take it yes. by faith. That's and how right. do you take it? You confess it. Yes. What do you mean by that? You speak what God has spoken and draw it nigh to yourself. That's, That's what right. the scripture would be yes. referring to. Yeah. Now let's look at the definition of confess. First of all, if, if you like this, it's kind of interesting to see. This is a Greek word. Confess comes from a Greek word, which is homologeo. So if you want to really put the emphasis on the right syllable, <laughs> it would be homologeo. Homologeo. Cool. So homologeo. That's a word that you can take to yeah. your next party and sound like a really intelligent Greek scholar. <laughs> But the idea behind home legato is this. It means to say the yes. same thing as another. Amen. So confessing something scripturally means to say the same thing as another has said. That's right. Well, who do you guess the other is? <laughs> the word of God. The word of God, which yeah. is God. Yeah. God has spoken the thing that we're about ready to confess. Amen. And that is that Jesus is Lord. Amen. That's what we're confessing. And so we are confessing the same thing as another has spoken, that being God. It also means to agree with. To confess means to con agree with. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. You're agreeing with God. Amen. Do you want to know how we know that Jesus is Lord? Because God said he is. That's correct. Absolutely. That's how we know. Yep. You might not feel like Jesus is Lord. <laughs> it might not sometimes look like Jesus is Lord. But the reason we know Jesus is Lord is because God has said he is Lord. That's right. Right. Whether people believe it or not, it's still the truth. Right. <laughs> right. And, and it's interesting about God. God is a spirit. Remember, everybody. Yes. And the word of God is spirit. And so the word of God doesn't necessarily carry this heavy. No. Mantly feeling about a, a mantle like I'm talking about Elijah's yeah, mantle was on his back, a yeah. heavy, hairy coat yeah. that's on you that you just yeah. feel laden down with it. <laughs> yes. No, when the word of God is spoken, it feels kind of light and yes. airy. Yes. It's just the truth. Yeah. And so in this case, we're referring to the fact that confessing means agreeing that Jesus is Lord. Confess also means this to concede. That's kind of an interesting, you know, definition of confess. You are conceding something. You that. might not necessarily be all in on it at first. That's the idea of concede. But you go like, you know, I got to admit, you see that I concede that that's got to be true. Sure. You know, as I'm looking at this more, as I'm hearing what you're saying, I got to admit that's compelling. I concede that that's true. See what I mean? That's the word confess. It Confession doesn't even have to be an over-the-top sort of a thing like, man, you are all in. You're ready to save planet Earth. You believe it. That settles it. I'm in. See what I mean? It can mean to concede something. That's great. Or to acknowledge something. I acknowledge that that's true. But this final word I think it's a very interesting awesome. um, variation on the word. Yes. And that's this word covenant. Yes. Confess means a covenant. Now, can you see that in the light of the confession of the Lordship of Jesus Christ over yes. our life? Oh, yes. We are entering into something that is way stronger than we may realize. Yeah. Confess is a covenant. Hallelujah. So 
homologeo is talking about the idea that we are confessing in agreement with someone else, that being God, mm -hmm. conceding and acknowledging that what he has said is true and it's on the level of a covenant. Praise That's God. That's the word, confess. Wow. Let's read on. Glory. So if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, and notice that that's how you confess. You don't confess with your mind. No. This is an out loud thing. Yes. Kind of interesting, isn't it, that there's a distinction? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us will pray mentally. But when it has to do with certain transactions in the kingdom of God, yes, we want to say it out loud. Yes. That's why this is talking about we confess with our mouth, not with our mind. Yeah. Because we can think the same prayer in our mind. I, I could say this out loud. I believe Jesus is Lord. I confess him as Lord over my life. I could say the same thing in my mind. I just said it. <laughs> so the point is, it could be in your mind. Scripture doesn't indicate that, though. No. It says in this case, we would confess it with our mouth. Say it out loud, right? Yes, amen. But what are we confessing? We're confessing this. The Lord Jesus. Yes. Now, you got to admit, even though you're familiar with this phrase, that that phrase sounds kind of funny the way it's worded. Let me say it again so you hear the funniness. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. <laughs> what? So I say, the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. <laughs> the Lord Jesus. <laughs> you know, how, how? what's the significance? <laughs> Well, let me vary the sentence slightly. If you looked at the Greek structure behind the sentence, mm -hmm. it would be accurate to say, confess with thy mouth, Jesus as Lord. Amen. The Lord Jesus, Jesus as Lord. See the idea? Yes. And the significance of this is that you're saying it. Yes. You're agreeing with it. Right. You're conceding and acknowledging that. That's right. You're covenanting to that reality. Right. That's what rebirths your spirit. Absolutely. That That's the significance is that it's in your mouth. I mean, the truth is the truth. That's Jesus right. is Lord. Yes. He is seated at the right yep. hand of Father yep. today. Every knee will bow, the scripture says, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That, that, by the way, that's an interesting thing. To the contrary, what I said a little earlier is that there's not this big mantle, this big heaviness that's upon us that makes us feel that these things are true. Hey, that day when Jesus' name is declared before all of heaven, and every human being has been resurrected and are standing before the throne of Almighty God. Yes. On that day, I can imagine the archangel shouting out, Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. And when that word is shouted, every person standing before the throne of God falls on their knees before him. That's right. On that day, there will be a great weight of God's glory that comes upon every man, yes. every woman That's right. that makes us bow before the Lord. Now, Hallelujah. we won't be made, but those who are rebellious against the Lord will be forced to submission before the Lord. Amen. That doesn't mean they're saved. No. That just means they're acknowledging <laughs> by their action yes. that he is Lord. That's right. You go like, I don't think God does stuff like forcing people to bow before him. Let me give you a little preview. <laughs> They're coming to get Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. And all of a sudden, here they come, this group of soldiers right? and re rebels and shouting, angry, mobbish sort of people that have swords in their hands. And Jesus walks out before them and says, whom do you seek? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth. And it says, I am he. Now, the scripture actually doesn't say he. It says, I am. And when he said that, it says they fell back and fell to the ground. That's right. Wow. Yes. Do you think they did that? Like this mob that was coming to attack right. Jesus? Do you think they did that out of reverence and honor and respect no. to the Lord Jesus Christ? No, they did it by force. That's right. The power of point. God came upon them and forced them to the ground. Good word. Because he is, I am. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. All right, so let's read on in the sentence. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Now we're going to look at the word Lord. Hallelujah. Just as a quick thought, the word Lord is not a real familiar word in our culture. No. Lord, Lord. That's like a religious thing you're talking about, right? Most people would re recognize it on that level. You know, a Lord or the Lord or the good Lord, <laughs> the man upstairs and oh people have all kinds of variations. No, it, it, They think that when they think the word Lord. Well, let's look at what the word Lord actually means in the Greek language. Oh, it's awesome. First of all, let's read it in Greek. It's curious, curious, okay? And this is what it means. Supreme in authority. Lord means supreme in authority. Now, hearken back to what we've just referred to. Yeah. You're acknowledging, you're confessing something. You have covenanted to something. You have acknowledged and agreed with the fact that Jesus is supreme in authority. Now, most of us would go, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But let this retune you a little bit this morning. What is your confession about Jesus? What are we saying? Right. What has saved us? Right. What we say is that he is supreme in authority. Amen. Now look at this one. He is the controller. That's the Greek. The controller. <laughs> and the master. Now that really is not part of our culture. No. Our American culture. No. A master a master is an Eastern word. Yes. That always means a superior. And it doesn't mean a, like an employer superior. It means like an owner. Yeah. This person owns you. Hmm. And we'll get to that in a moment. It says, as another definition of the word curious, it says, he to whom a person or thing belongs. That's a Lord. So Jesus being Lord means that if he is our lord yes we belong to him that's interesting isn't it that we belong to him yeah i think that that's such a nice idea well you know why it's a nice idea because jesus is awesome if he wasn't awesome that might not be such a nice idea because the reality is you are possessed you are owned that's right yeah, the Lord says we're not our own. We've been bought with a price. Isn't that a thought? Amen. That, that's a great scripture. Thank you. We've been bought with a price. Yes. Wait, who bought me? What do you mean? I didn't know I was for sale. <laughs> well, you were purchased and so was I. We were purchased. If we weren't purchased, we couldn't have been redeemed. Redeemed yeah. means to have bought but back. Right. But that's like not a it's he yes he is our master and he's like the ruler of our lives but that's like we you are saved amen that's sweetheart like, someone, like buying you when you're an orphan and like you're in this perfect family that, exactly. that's true yeah. this, it, it's it's about who has done this that's yeah. right you know yes and thank god <laughs> literally in this case thank god <laughs> that the one who owns us is wonderful amen and it's it's a perfect situation for everyone who submits to him that's right all right a little further definition of the word lord amen. the owner or one who has control of the person now that's interesting too you'd go like now wait a minute i have freedom you know in my life i can do what i want to do it's interesting about that sort of freedom though yes that sort of freedom Yes, we are free. We're free to sin because there's either righteousness or sin. We're free to sin. The wages of sin is death. And so sin always leaves us at best feeling cruddy and guilty and wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't stand it when God does that to me. God doesn't do that to us. No. Sin does that to That's us. That's right. Paul actually said, I have the right to do everything. Anything, uh, but not everything is beneficial. Can you cite that scripture? Sure. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 12. And one more time. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. Yeah, that's good. So we're free. Paul, that's, that's right. Paul was very into profit. You'll hear him use that term. What profit is there in this? You know, and then he, he'd cite an example of something. 
So the idea in scripture is, why would you do something that's not profitable, first of all? Secondly, why would you do something that would harm you? Yes. And God is the one that teaches everything that is not of my will will harm you. Yes. And so his whole point in being strong and forceful in his teaching to us is to save us from that harm. Uh, sometimes he's pretty strong about what he has to say about things, but the point is to save us. Okay. And then the last, this is a really, really great final statement about this curious, which is Lord. And it says this, a title of honor, expressive of respect and reverence, Lord, mm. with which servants greet their master. Oh, awesome. So when we say Lord yeah. to him, Lord is not his name, of course. <laughs> Lord is his title. That's right. And we submit every time we're using that word title to the reality that we are below him. Yes. In other words, we raise him above us. He is raised above us, but I mean, we do it by choice. Yes. He is above us. We would have no problem with falling on our face and kissing his feet no. because of who he is. That's right. All right. Let's, oh. let's read on a little bit. Awesome. Here it is. So with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ is what we're confessing. And you shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. In other words, this whole thing would be a moot point. Right. If Jesus was not raised from the dead. What, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Well, just think about it. Seriously. You know, we, we kind of take it for granted that this stuff is all just rocking and rolling true, right? Man. Well, Imagine if Jesus was not raised from the dead. This whole book would be a lie. Oh, he wouldn't be saved. It's, it's be. based upon the fact that Jesus was raised from Absolutely. the dead. Absolutely. Because he was killed. Mm. Jesus died. And you've got to let him die. You've got to let him be dead for three days. And then he was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. And when he was raised from the dead, we were all raised from the oh, dead. Oh, thank you, Lord. And that's the significance of that to us. We yes. should rejoice over his resurrection. Hallelujah. Because that was our resurrection. That's right. Someday I'm going to be resurrected from the dead. We were raised from the dead that's as right. far as our spirit is concerned. Our body yeah. is going to be raised from the dead someday. That's, that's right. going to be a cool day. Yeah. We're going to watch these bodies, mm -hmm. which will have been perhaps in many cases, long uh you know return to the dust so to speak yeah you mean even like in caskets and stuff like that oh yeah there are a bunch of bones in those caskets i mean the the body lasts just so long i don't mm -hmm. care how many chemicals we pump into it even the ones that are cremated oh well that's true yeah i don't care if you cremated it and spread it out over miles of ocean <laughs> it doesn't matter what's going to be so cool uh -huh. is it's going to be brought <laughs> back together again is god going to actually do that or he's just going to recreate or is he just going to create a brand new body no he says he's going to recreate our body he's going to he's into that right he likes to raise something back up yes. he likes to bring something to its fruition. Yes. And this body was designed initially to live forever. That's right. It's not right that it dies. No. And so he's going to redeem the body once Hallelujah. and for all by raising it up from the dead, yes. putting it all back together yep. and infusing it with eternal life this time. So our bodies will not have the capacity to die right. ever again. Right. That's why when Jesus came into the disciples, when they were in the room afraid and he said, handle me flesh and bone, uh, not flesh and blood because his blood was on the mercy yeah, seat. Cool. And yet he had his same body that was crucified because he still had the holes in his wrist. True. That's and a good point. And he said, put your fingers through the holes in my side and in my wrist. Yeah. That was his glorified body. And that's the same, same body, body we're going to have. So we're going to have the same body. I don't like my body. Oh, you'll love that body. <laughs> Amen. First of all, it's going to feel great. Yes. And it's going to be made in the image of God's own body. And it's going to have capacity and capabilities we never yeah. could even imagine. Yep. So, Amen. yay God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yay all God. Right. <laughs> so, we finally gotten down to this word that we're heading toward in the sentence. Hallelujah. Because we want to be saved yes. as we confess the Lord Jesus. Well, this is all kind of silly because I'm already saved. Well, <laughs> hey. Uh why are you saved? Mm -hmm. You know, what saved you? Right. 
we need to go back over these right. things. Right, and what have you been saved from? Well, that's good too. Amen. Sure. Yeah. It's just the reality is that this confession that we've made is like a covenant. Yes. It has made some changes, boy. Oh, boy. And we need to remind ourselves of those changes. But again, so Amen. thou shalt be saved if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ. What does saved mean? Uh -huh. Lisa talked about this earlier. Amen. I've been hearing Keith Moore pronounce this word so-so. So-so with the D. And, and you know, I, that would be technically correct. We, yes. we often pronounce it so-so. So -so. Yeah. Just a silent so-so. Uh-huh. Technically, it's sodzo, right. like soda, yeah. sodzo. Right. And this is what it means. Uh -huh. In other words, that we would be saved. That's why it's important that we advise our friends to confess the lordship of Jesus Christ over their life, to submit, to say the same thing as God has said about Jesus, yes. to confess that Jesus is the supreme authority, the one who has control over me. Yes. The one who is my Lord and master. Hallelujah. That's the confession of a Christian. That's it. Okay. Wow, you guys are so pathetic. You sure about that? Uh huh. Uh huh. Or are we just doing what God told us to do? Yes. Just like He told you to do. Yes. You know, we would be saying to our friend, right? This is not our God. Mm -hmm. This is God. Yeah. God is God over all creation. Yeah. And so what's true for us is true for all mankind. Absolutely. We're not just goody two-shoe Christians. We're just people that, thank goodness, have submitted ourselves oh, to the you, truth Lord. as it was presented to us. Thank you, Lord. And that's what all mankind is commanded to do. Yes. Hallelujah. So saved. Here we go. Sozo means to keep safe and sound. When you have this Lord, his purpose is to keep us safe and sound. That's right. Isn't that great? That's great. Good start, right? Amen. We're looking at the word saved. It also means to rescue from danger or destruction. Thank you, Lord. We have somebody who rescues us yes. from danger and destruction. Amen. Just look at Psalm 91 and you'll see what we've been rescued from. Mm. Hallelujah. Good example. That's right. That'd be something good to look up again today. Psalm 91. To rescue from danger or destruction. Amen. Also, to save a suffering one from perishing. Remember that? Yes. Remember when Jesus talks in John 3 and he says that they would not perish yes. but have eternal life? Amen. That's an interesting word. You know what that word means. I always use this example because, you know, it's, it's simple. Cut an apple in half uh -huh. and set it up on your windowsill mm -hmm. and just let it sit there for about a week or two. And you'll notice after a week or two, it has perished. Yes. The thing has rotted. It's it's turned into something it was not originally. Yes. That's the word perish. Imagine that's word, that word is used toward us. Wow. God's will is not that we would perish. Amen. He doesn't want us to perish. And boy, no. you could broaden that any way you want to. That's right. According to your faith, be it unto you. That's right. I'm perishing in this area. Yes. I'm perishing in that area. Certainly we can use that in regards to our body. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to perish any longer, God. You said you, said you would save me from perishing. Praise God. There it is. Amen. Saved. Saved yes. from perishing. Another example is to save one suffering from a disease. Glory to now, these God. are Greek definitions. Yes. You know? This isn't like an interpretation of the scripture. No. These are definitions of this word saved. Mm -hmm. To save one suffering from a disease. Praise God. Praise the Lord. That means we can go to the Lord and say, wait a minute. Randy was reading that the word saved means to save me from a disease. Well, Lord. <laughs> I've confessed to you as Lord. You are my Lord. Right. I want you to save me from this disease. Praise God. To save one from a disease. Yes. That's saved. Yes. Hallelujah. It also means to make one well. Hallelujah. To save them. To make them well. To heal and restore to health. Glory. Wow, just really great, isn't it? I don't know that I believe in healing. Well, then you don't believe in being saved. Healing means to heal and restore to health. See? So, of course, you believe in healing because God, our, our master, believes in healing. All right. Another definition of saved is to preserve one 
who is in danger of destruction. You know, you're in danger of being destroyed. You might not even know you're in danger of being destroyed. But now because you have this master who's watching out for you, another way the Bible likes to refer to Jesus is as the shepherd, the great shepherd, the good shepherd. Yes. He's always watching out for danger. And it says that he will preserve you who are in danger from being destroyed. Praise Thank God. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's why we call him Lord. Amen. Not our buddy, Jesus. Not oh, bro. Man. Hey, bro, how's it going in heaven today? How's it hanging at the right hand of the Father? No, no. No, no it'd be better for no. you to fall on your face before him because Amen. that's what you need him to be. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. We need a Lord. Yes. We need a master yes. who is wow yes you know just wows us yes that's who jesus is yes and another definition is to rescue Hallelujah. he will rescue yeah. us <laughs> we sound like we need a lot of help yeah i don't know about you this defines me real well amen i need to be rescued yes we yes. have a hero yes. a savior yeah well yeah you know he saved me yeah and saves you and saves you and saves you and saves you you were saved, you are being saved, and you will be saved. Amen. So Amen. So. Amen. Hallelujah. A perfect example of that, Rand, is from Mark 2, 9. Remember when the four guys lowered the paralytic down? They tore the top of the roof off, and they lowered the paralytic down. And Jesus knew the thoughts of the Pharisees and the scribes that they were thinking in this heart. Who does this man think he is, thinking that he can come to forgive sins? Jesus says this amazing thing, which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk, which is easier. I love that. That means they're both the same. Yeah. And there are certain denominations in the church that only teach saved means going to heaven. Yeah. Well, Jesus put saved and healing in the same package. Ah. And so when we realize that healing is a part of the covenant, just like salvation in going to heaven is, now our faith will rise in that area. And that's why we teach the word of God. Yeah, we'll draw on yes. him for that. Amen. We'll expect that from him. That's right. If, you know... Uh, F.F. F. Bosworth, who wrote Christ the Healer, said this. He said, faith begins. Yes. Think about what I'm saying. Amen. Faith begins where the will of God is known. That's right. If you don't know what the will of God is, you can't have any faith. No. Well, I think I've got faith. Mm -hmm. No, faith is a unique thing. Faith is faith in the will of God. Faith is faith in what God has said. Exactly. That's what faith is. Yes. So if we don't know what he said, if we don't know that, that healing, like you just said, yes. is part of the new covenant, then we don't have any faith for it. That's why we need to learn these things. All right. And then also it says this, and this is, this is a more traditional uh, concept of the word saved. Huh. And it's an important part to deliver from the penalties of God's final judgment. Ooh, praise God. There's only one reason why we are not going to be judged yes. along with the rest of creation. Yep. Only it. one. One. And that's because we have received Jesus as Lord. Amen. That's the will of the Father. That is. I don't know that I agree with all that. Well, it's the will of the Father. <laughs> it's true nonetheless. He's commanded you to receive Jesus as Lord. And as a benefit of receiving Jesus as Lord, you are not going to suffer the final judgment of all of creation. Hallelujah. That's the, that's the way it is. Amen. Well, we thank you for that, Lord. We thank, thank you that we that, will not Lord. suffer the final judgment of God because you are our master and Lord. You have thank paid you. for us. You've redeemed us from that. You've bought us yes. from that judgment. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. I want to give a few examples, and we're, we're coming close to the end here, guys. So a few examples of Jesus as Lord or the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You know, what do we mean? Uh, let's go back to this word, Jesus. He's the supreme authority. He's the controller or master. Uh, he to whom a person or thing actually belongs. That's how high he is. So give me some examples of those, Randy. Give me some examples of, of the greatness of Jesus in the scripture. I want to see it. All right. I'll give you a couple. <laughs> so let's open to the book of John. First chapter, John 1. 
and we're going to look in verses 26 and 27. Hallelujah. This is from an interesting translation. It's called the BSB, which is the Berean Study Bible. Yes. This is what it says. I baptize with water, John replied. This is John the Baptist. Yes. <laughs> but among you stands one whom you do not know. Mm -hmm. You guys know who that is? Oh, yes. Who's the one that they did not know yet? The Holy Spirit. Well, that was Jesus. Oh. And of course, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good answer, though, at least, because the Holy Spirit was certainly in Jesus. Um, but you don't know him yet. He is the one who comes after me, John said. And here's the point. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Isn't that something? Yeah. Now listen to that same sentence from the New Living Translation. Though his ministry follows mine, do you see what John is saying? Yeah. My ministry is actually before Jesus's. Yes. Well, his ministry was Jesus. That's right. It was right. to declare to the world the Messiah was about ready to come on the scene. Yes, amen. Though his ministry follows mine, I'm not even worthy to be his slave uh -huh. and untie the straps of his sandal. Wow. Now, do you see how John oh, looked at him? Yes. Yep. Amen. That was it? Yeah. I thought you were... You're winding up for something. <laughs> it looks like you're ready to say something profound and powerful. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Uh, we'll let the word speak for itself then. I'm not yes. even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandal. Glory. You see, Lord, he is Lord. He's the supreme in authority. Yes. John saw that. Yeah. John saw that he's the master. Yes. That's why he said, I'm not worthy to even stoop down and untie his sandals like a slave. Wow. And this is John the Baptist whom Jesus said was the greatest of all the prophets. Wow. So look at the comparison between yes. the two. There's Jesus, looks just like John. And then there's John. When John and Jesus got into the water, you know, for the sake of Jesus being baptized, John was startled and he looked at him and said, I don't understand. I have need to be baptized of you. Why am I baptizing you? Yes. And yes. He, Jesus said, it's, it's right to fulfill all righteousness that I be baptized. Amen. And the explanation to that, that's something we can talk about another time. But yes. the point is, John was even startled. Like, uh, why am I baptizing you, oh, great master? Do you see what I mean? Yes. We need to let that into our heart or else this isn't going to make a lot of sense to us going through our lives. You know, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And he is our Lord. He is supreme in authority. He owns us. You know, we fall before him and worship him. Yes. And wow, does he do things in response to us? Oh, you know, God. so it's a two way street. Yes, but the it point is. is, is we want him to be Lord. Yeah. Not just to be a comfortable <laughs> buddy and friend. Like you know? how Dan Moeller says, it's not Jesus incorporated. It's not like coffee and it's not Jesus and yeah, he is my life. That's good. I got to explain that because I've liked that <laughs> phrase that yeah. Dan has said, Jesus incorporated. It's a clever phrase. It just sounds like the Jesus comma INC period, Jesus incorporated like a company. Yeah, no, That's not what he's no. saying. He's saying that a lot of us as Christians just incorporate Jesus into our lives. Uh -huh. It's not Jesus incorporated. No. It's Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And we're in him. Amen. You see what I mean? That's yes. what Paul is saying when uh, it's no longer I that live. That's right. I don't live anymore. I was crucified. That's right. With Jesus. I was crucified. Excellent. But now I'm alive. Then it's no longer I that live. It's Christ in me who is alive. That's right. It's it's an amazing reality yep. that's in yep. addition to yep. his lordship. Yep. Yep. Not only that, but right. we are now Along for the ride. That's you know that, right. that bumper sticker that says Jesus is my co-pilot? Uh, At best, it would be I'm Jesus's co-pilot. Yeah. You know, I'm in the right seat. You Jesus is the captain. Yeah, yeah. You see, mm -hmm. and that's not even being just clever. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. That's the way that the scripture is yeah. giving us our understanding. Yeah. yeah. So, All right. So the life that we now live in the flesh, we live by faith in the Son of God which is the rest of Galatians right. 2.20 that you Faith were saying. Faith in the Son of God. Right. And in fact, that's that's kind of implied in this next statement here. Well, oh. in a couple of future statements. But Amen. That's good one, Lisa. Oh, glory. Let's look at John chapter 8, 57 through 59. Now, this is another oh, indication is awesome. of why are we calling him 
the supreme ruler, yes. the one who is above me, the one that, you know, I would bow before him and untie his sandals. The one that when John the apostle, the beloved apostle John, appeared before the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven at the right hand of the father Jesus, that yes. Jesus, yeah. no longer the Jesus on earth. No. When he appeared before that Jesus, whom he had leaned his head tenderly on Jesus's breast and, and been a close personal you know, disciple of Jesus, when he saw Jesus in heaven, he fell down at his feet as dead. Amen. That's the power of the That's Jesus right. that we serve. That's right. Jesus had to reach out his hand and lift John up. Yes. And revive him because of the power that this one that we're serving is living in at this moment. That's Jesus. It says that all things are sustained through the word of his power. That's correct. In other words, everything yes. is, is, all we can do is declare the, the statement, but I'll give you just a little phrase to take home with you. All things are sustained by the word of the Lord Jesus's power. What is this? Did Father God retire or something? <laughs> Father God put the fullness, the full weight of the Godhead in Jesus Christ yes. bodily. That's right. That is the fullness of God yes. in, a, in a body. Jesus. We call him Jesus. That's the fullness of God in a body. Yes. So no, Father did not retire. Father and Jesus are one. Yes. See? Amen. Great conversation. <laughs> so this is John 8, 57 through 59. Why do we consider him the supreme ruler? Then the Jews said to Jesus, you are not yet 50 years old. And you're saying you've seen Abraham? Jesus says, truly, truly, I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. Wow. Now, lest you mistake, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's like, Boom. mic drop, that's what Mary was saying. <laughs> yeah. Lest you mistake what he means by that last little bit, I am. It says in verse 59, at this, they picked up stones to stone him with Whoa. but jesus <laughs> that they knew exactly what jesus meant they he just identified himself yes. as i am the one who spoke to moses that's right that, that's interesting that, that they just automatically knew that we might have just been like what, what does i am mean yes, yes. so they knew that that meant like the i the am. amen mary absolutely that's yeah. right and then it ends by saying, but Jesus was hidden. <laughs> well, he like he, he just kind of ducked no. down. Yeah. Th this this okay. mob that was about ready to murder him no. with stones. No. no, he didn't just duck no, he down. Duck he just all of a sudden disappeared. disappeared. <laughs> Very cool. Amen. And then the last statement to show the supreme master level of Jesus oh, wow. is in Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. Yes. Matthew 17, Amen. verse 1 beautiful this is called the mount of transfiguration yes. let's listen to it after six days jesus took with him peter james and john the brother of james and led them up a high mountain by themselves there he was transfigured before them now we're used to hearing that phrase and so yeah you know just keep going i get it i don't think we get it no he was standing there and the way he was yeah. suddenly started to change. That's right. It That's says right. his face shone like the sun. Amen. You guys ever looked at the sun? Ooh. Your parents would teach you, don't look at the sun. It'll burn your retinas. Yes. Jesus's face shone like the sun. And his clothes became as white as light. Now, does this mean that the glory of God was coming upon Jesus? Mm -mm. No. This is the glory of God that was within yes, Jesus that was all of a sudden showing what he really was, Amen. what he really looked like. Amen. His clothes themselves became white as light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. <sighs> Moses and Elijah came to encourage Jesus. Yes. By the way, just a little side note. This mm. is a way little side note. But some people would say, I think that when we die, we sleep and then all of us are resurrected on the last day. No. 
How is it that Moses and Elijah <laughs> appeared sleep. to Jesus? No. Did, did they get resurrected from the dead and then sent to the earth? <laughs> and then they went back into the grave after they were done? No. No, we don't sleep uh -uh. in the sense of sleep. No. That word sleep means death. Yes. Jesus liked yes. that word sleep. Yes. It's cool because before Jesus was on earth, he would have been in heaven with Moses and Elijah. So they knew who he was. That's exactly, a good point. Exactly, man. That's, That's right. Jesus was point. in heaven before he came to the yes. earth. Yes. That he was the word of God. Verse four, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, <laughs> one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And here's, here's the clincher. While he was still speaking, oh. a bright cloud covered them. Yes. And a voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Mm. Listen to him. That's the reason why when we confess Jesus is our Lord, yes, that we actually, you know, submit to that reality Amen. because God, the father attested to the fact that we are to listen to him, wow. listen to Jesus. He's the one that was, you know, sent to lead us. Hallelujah. Wow. All right. Well, we're at 1230. Glory. So I'd like to conclude at that. And we will end with a prayer, Lise. Wow. Then we're going to wrap it up. Oh, boy. Hallelujah. Father, the word was so rich that went forth this morning. And I pray, Father, that you burn these words into our consciousness yes, like Lord. a branding iron on the side of a cow's hip that they become a part of who we are, that you shine your light on this word, that you reveal yourself to us in a way that we've never known before, that we see the glory of God, that we're transformed or quote, transfigured into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ so that we truly are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. We give you all the praise for your wonderful, glorious word this morning to us, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.